Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Custom Air Suspension, How to Install Air Suspension in Your Road Car on a Budget. What I want to do in today's video is have a look at the system that I've installed on my own road car, a complete custom system, front and rear air suspension, designed to give both good ride and handling. Although you can dump the car in the weeds and lift it up really high, that's not why I did it. I wanted excellent ride and handling, and it's a small, lightweight car, and that makes air suspension even more effective. So let's have a look. Here's the car. It's a little Honda Insight, only 850 kilograms, a 2000 model. This isn't my car, but this is a nice photo of one on the road. And as I say, front and rear air suspension. Here's my car at the lowest ride height, and here it is at the highest ride height, looking quite startled, isn't it? Leaping into the air. Uh, both of those ride heights that I've just shown, uh, the high one here, and oops, go back there, and the low one there uh, are too high and too low for road use. I never run them at those two heights. So that's just to show the, the, the different height variation that is possible, but that's not how I run them. I want good ride and handling, and good ride and handling doesn't come from having it way up in the air or way down in the weeds. So let's have a look at the suspension systems that I fitted. Here is the rear suspension, the standard rear suspension of the Honda Insight. It's a torsion beam rear suspension, a sort of semi-independent, if you like, uh, with coil springs and inclined dampers. And of course, it's those coil springs that needed to be changed by uh, fitting air springs. Here's the change that I made to the torsion beam rear axle. You can see that I've put in a cup. I've welded in a cup on a extension and a Firestone air spring, a rolling lobe, rolling sleeve air spring fits into that cup. And if we have a look at the next shot, we can see there's the air spring. Uh, you can see on the right, there's a new rubber bump stop, which I have added to the left, and the inclined dampers you can see in the background. So in terms of uh, fitting air suspension to the rear of the car, it was reasonably straightforward, a bit of fabrication and change required on the rear axle. And of course, the, the rear axle or suspension had to come out of the car to actually do that. Here's the system that I employ, and it's got one really good trick. You can see that there are uh, up and down solenoids at the bottom. You open the up solenoid and air flows into the springs, lifting the ride height. You open the down solenoid and air flows out of the springs, and so the ride height is lowered. But you can also see that I have a solenoid in a line that connects the rear springs. If we have that solenoid, that open shut valve, if we have that valve open, rear roll stiffness is less. If we have that valve closed, rear roll stiffness is higher. Now, if you know anything about front wheel drive handling, uh, if it is wet or slippery, you want to reduce the rear roll stiffness. So I flick a switch and that opens if the road's wet or if I'm on dirt. And if I'm on normal bitumen and the road is dry, I close that solenoid and so it provides better turn in. So you can do some pretty tricky things with air springs. That's some of the tricks that I employed at the back of the car. Front of the car, much more difficult. If I had my time over again, I may well have only done the back of the car. Here's the standard inside front suspension, McPherson struts, uh, joined by an anti-roll bar, and with the steering arms quite a long way up the struts, uh, not at the bottom as they are on a lot of McPherson strut cars. Here are the fabricated front struts. They use airlift uh, kits, but a lot of fabrication required. Those steering arms that you can see sticking out had to be uh, machined for me. Um, you can see that the, the holes where the steering arm joints go, uh, there, I've, I've given it two sets of holes so I can change the steering ratio, but they're tapered holes to take that particular ball joint, so I had to farm that out to a, a machinery company um, to do that machining for me. Um, it's a lot of work, uh, you can see, in those struts that uh, fit in the front of the car. Airlift kits to start with, but hundreds of hours of work. Here's part of that work. I had to make a jig in order to hold the parts of the strut in exactly the right position so that when they were welded, um, it just bolted up, it didn't change the wheel alignment, didn't change anything. And uh, the jigs were successful. The, the alignment remained exactly the same after I installed the new struts. 
Here's an underbonnet view under the uh, under the hood, and what I want to direct your attention to are those two cylinders which are up near the firewall. Um, they are cylinders that provide the air springs with more air volume. Um, they are connected in series with the air springs. The front springs on the little Honda were much too stiff, the airlift front springs, air springs, and so if you add some volumes in series, there's more air that gets compressed when the suspension is compressed, and so the spring rate is softer. Um, so one of the tricks employed to get the sort of spring rate that I was actually after. Here's a diagram showing the front and those, uh, those reservoirs we just saw under the bonnet, they're called accumulators in this diagram. So you can see how there's an accumulator connected to each of the springs. And you can see also we have up and down solenoids for each spring. So the two rear springs are controlled as a pair. The two front springs are controlled individually. To measure ride height, I'm running ride height sensors, two at the front, one on each side and one at the back. And these are X Range Rover air suspension sensors, which are readily available. They're nicely sealed. Uh, they, they act just as a potentiometer, so they're easy to power, say with a five volt regulated feed, and then a variable voltage comes out, which is indicative of the actual ride height. Here is my solenoid block as such. I built it up from individual solenoids or eBay solenoids and uh, then push fit fittings. And then I added lots of labels because if you don't have lots of labels, it's really easy to get confused. So you can see there are up and down solenoids for the rear controlled as a pair. And then there are individual uh, up and down solenoids for each side on the front. Here's the very back of the car. This is normally covered by the bumper. When it's back on, you don't see any of this at left is a BMW X5 compressor that I use, uh, relatively cheap. At right is a Porsche KN uh, air reservoir, again, relatively cheap and very light because they're made of aluminium. Down the bottom is a uh, filter, a water catcher and filter. Um, and then you can see the little ball valve I've put in to drain any water which might end up in the tank. The BMW compressor has a desiccant dryer, uh, a special drying system that dries the air as it's coming in. So in the end, actually no water ends up in the tank, but I thought I'd better put that in from a, a safety point of view. As I say, all this is covered when the bumper cover is back on the car. So there it is, there's the BM, uh, sorry, the, the Honda Insight uh, air system, complete with that BMW compressor and Porsche KN tank. Uh, I haven't covered the electronic control system in this video, I might do that in another video. It's a very sophisticated control system, it automatically lowers the car as you go faster uh, for lower aerodynamic drag and better stability. It also um, uh, holds ride height very, very accurately. I actually have a readout of ride height from each of those sensors on my dash so I can see how accurately it's holding. Uh, that, that particular aspect, uh, but these are things I think I'll cover in another video. So there's a quick guide to the Honda Insight Custom Air Suspension, all covered of course in my book uh, if you want to uh, learn more about fitting such a system to your own car. Thank you.